Hey guys, I'm Roland Tech Enthusiast, and today we're going to find out if it's still worth buying the Google Pixel 4XL in 2021. Let's get started. I think the Pixel 4 series are the best looking pixels to this date. The elegant back glass panel and the painted aluminium frame gives it a very stylish dual tone look that looks fresh and modern. When you compare it with the previous generation of Pixel devices, you will see this as a far more minimal and visually appealing device for more people, though this is subjective. The 4XL is narrower and taller than my previous Pixel 2 XL which I found the exact right size. I could reach across the other side of the device and reach nearly all of the screen without doing some tricky manoeuvres to use the phone on a daily basis. The one thing that most people seem to hate is the gigantic forehead. Google sort of learned its lessons and instead of opting for a huge ugly notch, they went back to the basics and left a big bezel on the top of the device. Now, this isn't very innovative but it does get the job done without the notch so I'm all for it. Overall I'm very pleased with how the device has aged both in terms of looks and handling but I know that many of you will likely dislike the forehead and the wasted space. Given that at this point you most likely know what's inside a brand new shiny Pixel 5, the hardware is where it gets a little more tricky and somewhat exciting. You see, performance wise an older Snapdragon flagship chipset will still outperform a newer mid-range SoC, as is the case with the Pixel 5. Therefore, if you really want the best performance, the Pixel 4 series are the ones you might want to take a look at. Sure enough, the likes of 5G is nowhere to be found and you will likely miss out on a few Pixel exclusive features in the near future, but hardware wise, the Pixel 4 has everything you need on a daily basis, no matter if you're an average user scrolling through Reddit all day or a serious gamer playing some graphics intensive games. I'm happy to mention that while I still had some Wi-Fi issues, it worked well for most of the time and simply holding the phone did not cut it off or degrade the performance. It was really great to finally have a Pixel that could actually and properly use the Wi-Fi without any major issues. One issue that I think is worth mentioning is the 6GB of RAM. It took Google more than 3 years to finally up the RAM, but they could only include an extra 2 gigs. This was a welcome and a great addition, but it really should have been 8, more on this later. In the forehead you can see that there are multiple sensors, do you remember Soli? Yeah, neither do I. I disabled it 2 days after getting the phone because it was gimmicky and never worked properly. The idea was great, execution and support was really bad. Overall the hardware managed to keep up but the RAM is one major downside that makes me not recommend it to a lot of my friends. It's great, it gets the job done but it's far from perfect. The 6.3 inch display is colourful, bright and large enough to enjoy movies on the go or in a bed. I have never experienced any issues with it and found the colours were pleasing to my eyes. I've kept the settings on natural settings and movies and YouTube videos look perfect both day and night. The 90Hz refresh rate has helped making the experience fast and responsive and while I did see some colour shifting when the brightness was all the way down, the software bug was fixed rather quickly and haven't had any issues since. Using the phone in direct sunlight was also rather comfortable, I could read all the text, play games or watch videos comfortably without any issues, however I did find myself wondering on a few rare occasions whether the brightness could have been slightly higher, but I would still consider it excellent overall. Time to talk about performance. As I mentioned earlier, this is still a very fast chipset and can pretty much cope with everything you throw at it, be it multitasking or playing graphics intensive games. I did experience some slowdowns every once in a while and perhaps the 90Hz display helped me notice them more, but it never felt like a big issue or something that would make me worried. The only thing that did actually made me worried was the performance of the RAM. I simply could not run enough applications in the background without them being reloaded every time I'd go back to them. This was rather disappointing and something that power users should look out for. I know we all have different needs and requirements, but if you want to have YouTube, Reddit, Gmail and 2-3 other apps open in the background, prepare to wait a few more seconds as it will have to be reloaded very often. This isn't something non-power users will really care about since it's not terribly bad, but I thought it was worth mentioning. 
The battery in my opinion is fine, I've seen a lot of people complain that it was bad and inadequate, but I experienced the opposite. In fact it was better than my Pixel 2 XL's battery life even with 90Hz being on adaptive at all times. I could use it for a full workday without any issues, I only look for a charger when I actually use the phone out and about and the brightness had to be on maximum settings. Charging the phone was easy and I'm happy to confirm that after all this time, the USB-C port didn't fail or get damaged by normal use, so that's at least one thing Google finally managed to get right. And now let's talk about software, the software that's been on this device and the software that's keep being updated to this day. First, I feel like we should talk about all the good things. The haptic feedback feels great and solid, it's not quite an iPhone but I feel like it stands out for an Android phone for being firm and noticeable. This is one of the most overlooked features on a smartphone today, so it was great to see this do well. Although I said I turned off solely after two days, I kept some of the features on as it worked really well, such as the reach to check phone which would turn on the lock screen whenever my hand would go near the display. It was great not having to tap the screen, but just wipe my hand over the phone when sitting at the table. Active Edge, the squeeze to toggle with the assistant is still one of my favourite features and I miss it on devices that don't have this built in. This of course depends whether you use it as much as I do. Face Unlock works great but it took Google more than 6 months to implement the open close eye functionality which yet again was disappointing. On the plus side, unlocking the phone was always fast and ran without issues, unless of course I wore a mask. And that's just about all the good things I can say about the software, now onto the bad stuff. Face Unlock never matured enough and Google didn't seem to care and push developers to properly support it. Because of this, nearly none of my financial applications worked with it, which meant that I had to go back to prehistoric times and enter my password manually. Many US banking apps started supporting it, but here in the UK, it's a completely different story. The navigation gestures got a huge upgrade in Android 11, but sadly Google broke it when using third party software such as my preferred application Nova Launcher. Launchers simply don't have the same power as system applications and cannot fully work well with gestures. Although there are some tweaks that make it better, it's not perfect. There may be some applications flashing when opening or closing them and while multitasking. At times, both the navigation gesture and the notification shade would get stuck, requiring you to fully close an application and reopen it in order to fix it being glued to the screen. Using the Pixel Launcher was always fluid and did not have the same issues, or even when using the free button navigation buttons. The way this was and still to this day is being handled is simply terrible and Google should really be shamed for destroying the user experience on non-Pixel devices, but other devices running Android 11 too, that is if you're like me and prefer using third party launchers that provide actual customization options. Android 11 keeps forgetting whether an application has got an administrator and other special rights from the user. I have to toggle it on on a weekly basis which means that some applications and functionalities may break, unless you keep going back into the settings and turn it on manually. Soli and his features were not widely implemented and used in all of the music, video and streaming applications. Google Podcast for one still doesn't support it today and I feel like I can confidently say that Project Soli is dead for the time being. Most of these issues are still not fixed at the time of you watching this video and I'm certain that it won't be fixed the next time you check out a pixel in person. The gesture issue for example exists on all devices running Android 11, but some companies like OnePlus may have gotten around it and implemented better fixes than Google itself. Google at this point does not seem to care, but would rather want to push people using their own pixel launcher, which although is very stable, it lacks pretty much any customization options that even an average user would want, such as changing icons for example. Did not mean this video to be a rant about Google, but you have to know that I am or used to be a fan of the Pixel lineup and Google's vision. The Pixel 4 and Pixel 5 simply made me too disappointed not only with many issues with the Pixel devices, but also the Android operating system in general. But enough of the rant, let's talk about the camera. Did I say enough of the rant? Okay, I'll stop after the camera part, I promise. 
The main shooter is a 12 megapixel f1.7 aperture sensor that's capable of taking some really breathtaking photos in both day and night. The colors are usually on par with what I'm seeing in real life and the contrast and shadows are also optimized to be social network ready without requiring you to make any touch-ups. Portraits are excellent and while some of the bokeh effects aren't always perfect, I found the Pixel to be the best among other, even some recent flagship devices. However, that's not the same for the less useful but more fun telephoto camera. The colors and hue was always off compared to the main sensor and a lot warmer too. This hasn't been fixed since the beginning, even though it was pointed out on a number of occasions. Now, credit is due where it's due. The algorithm is really smart at making images clear when using the digital zoom. It's not perfect by any means, but it's really amazing what Google has done software-wise. I still wish they didn't come up with such a lame excuse for not including a more useful wide-angle sensor instead. I know this is subjective, but the majority of people, including myself, would have been more happy with the wide-angle on the 4 series. Instead, if you want wide shots, your only option is the Pixel 5 or other devices from Lich any other manufacturer. Here are some images so you can judge the camera quality for yourself. Now, conclusion time. Can I wholeheartedly recommend this device to you in 2021? The answer is, it's complicated. It really depends on your needs and requirements. If you have a small budget but always wanted a pixel and a full pixel experience, it's not a bad option. That is, for as long as you are happy with how limited you may be at multitasking and sticking with the true Pixel experience software-wise. If you are someone who just won a phone that you can rely on this and next year and are happy with both the device and Android's limitations as it stands right at this moment, this can also be a good device for you at a low price nowadays. However, if you are a power user who likes to customize the device and are looking to save even more by going for an older generation, you may want to check out the Pixel 5 or altogether just look for a better device that offers an overall better experience. The Pixel 4 series aren't terrible by any means, it's just not for everyone. I really hope that I can wholeheartedly recommend the Pixel flagship again in the near future, but that depends on whether Google is keeping a close eye on user feedback and recommendation. So there you have it, a review of the Google Pixel 4 XL in 2021. If you found this video useful, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to leave a like. Also, don't forget to leave your comments down below, I read them all, all the time. With all that said, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.